Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, leadership, and creating a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is a producer on the hit TV show, Magnum P.I. He is Kenneth Burke, and today we are going beyond Magnum P.I. Hey, Kenny, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Hey, Coach Rusty, good morning to you. Kenny, you have done such incredible work through so many years. I, I mean, maybe I know, I know how old you are, but you have a lot of, <laughs> you have a lot of wisdom, and you've accomplished so much. But can you share about um, some of the popular actors that you've worked with? Uh, I guess I worked with Val Kilmer and Karen Allen, and. Uh, Chris Christofferson is quite a favorite of mine. Um, Jim Caviezel. Yeah, there's a there's a ton. I've done over 60 feature films. Now, Kenny, have you ever been an actor yourself? I was an actor as a child, yeah. Now, what did you do? Did you do TV shows or was it theater? Well, mostly it was theater. I kind of came up in the theater. I sang Oliver at 11 and you know, kind of started it. It was sort of like, oh, you're a good reader. You can be in a play. So I kind of, that's where I got attracted to it. And Kenny, can you share, what are the differences between being an executive producer, a producer, and a line producer? I mean, what what are the differences? It's a good question. Everybody doesn't always understand that, why all these producers are always on the front of credit. I think executive producers basically in the TV world are the writers, right? They're the ones that put the whole concept together and tell the story. In film, they usually are the ones that bring the financing to the table and hire the line producer or hire the producers to see the creative side through. Um, and producers really are on the hook for the creative side. The line producer is on the hook to liaison between the creative side and the business end of the stick because we're responsible line producers for doing the budget, the schedule, hiring, firing, being the leadership role of like, I always say, like a general contractor, right? They hire the roofer, they hire the painters, they hire the village basically to put the whole show together. But they have, they have the commerce side of it, which is really important because if you don't come in on budget, you don't, you know, we've blown the the whole thing. And then the the uh, creative side is making sure the director's getting what he needs to tell his story. Oh, that's really interesting because for me, I, I, I didn't know what the differences are and I'm sure a lot of our viewers didn't know. So thanks for clarifying that. And, and Kenny, I wanna know your thought about why Magnum PI is a successful show. Well, Hawaii is probably the best recipe that you could have for that show. Um, we have the beauty of Hawaii. Uh, we have the island life. We have a Ferrari. Uh, it's a sexy show. We have action. The cast is such a gelled together cast. They come in, hit it every time, do short hours, and go home. Really, really, the magic in that is the, the cast and the beauty of Hawaii. So, Kenny, let's talk about the four main actors like you just brought up. And I mean, it seems like they have such great on screen on screen chemistry. Um, how hard is that to get? And why do you think that those four main characters um, really gelled together? Well, I think they're also nice humans, right? It's not just that they're great on screen, but they're all nice humans. And being a nice human and getting along together makes it really easy to work together, but they're also pros. They're super pro actors that they come in and, you know, that's why our showrunner, Eric Guggenheim, when he hires actors, he gets pros, right? Because you need it. We pump out a lot of pages every day, but uh, they, I will, I, I will continue to say that they're all nice humans and that's really part of it. Oh, I completely agree with you, Kenny. And can you share about the, I mean, 
the impact that the writer's strike and the actor's strike had on Magnum PI? Um, well, we're, we, we kind of uh, believe that was kind of the reason we, we got canceled, right, this year. When the writer's strike came in, um, they weren't going to keep paying all the actors, and we didn't have an, a date when, when we would, you know, the writer's strike would be over and the SAG strike would be over. So it was difficult to go ahead and keep investing on these payer plays for all of our our cast and crew and, and keep it all going when it was just unknown. So and, we did really well on our, our season, last season. We did really well on numbers. And so unfortunately, here we are. No, and Kenny, you guys had filmed an additional 10 episodes prior to getting canceled. And those episodes that are being shown now I mean, it's it's getting like nine million plus views, right? Really, really good numbers. Yeah. Well, it's a good show, and we actually, you know, we did when we we went to NBC last year for the last twenty episodes, um, and they kind of, you know, as they do, we need it cheaper, faster, better, and she trimmed our budget on us, right? So we saved up money at the first ten episodes till Christmas, and then after Christmas, we spent that money and really ramped up the action and all the stuff that we did on the last 10, uh, or the, the, the back uh, 10, was the really super huge. Like, we did really big stuff. Oh, and Kenny, I, I can, I, I've watched every episode, um, every episode and every season, and you're right. I mean, there, you can see that it's, like, awesome stuff in these um, these remaining episodes. And what are the... What do you see are, are the chances of Magnum being resurrected? Well, it's happened before. We, it happened to us uh, between season four and season five. The chances are, are, are uh, you know, it's it, slim and none, probably, but we are always hopeful because we like the show. We like making the show. Um, the crews here in Hawaii are amazing, and we're a family, right? We are a family. Uh, a village that all works together and uh we you know we'll go on to something else of course we're gonna continue to bring other shows here and uh we'll all see each other again but i i'm not sure that that's going to uh to come back <laughs> yeah now kenny can you share with our viewers um some of the other shows movies that that you worked on previously um in the past maybe two decades um, here on island, I did Soul Surfer, uh, the Bethany Hamilton uh, story. Um, that was quite an inspirational story. Another one that I always, when I think of you, Coach Rusty, I think of this movie called When the Game Stands Call, about a winning coach and about his leadership qualities and how he, he came in to do a job in theology. And then they gave him the varsity head coach he'd never done anything like it before he put them through their paces they ended up winning 151 straight games never been done before i don't think pro high school any record like that they called it the street that's the jim caviezel movie and it's quite inspirational and it is about leadership and it ties right into your book no uh, you know i watched that movie that that was such an awesome movie very inspirational and like you said, Soul Surfer with Bethany Hamilton, that was inspirational as well. And you also did Holly Road. Uh, can you tell us about Holly Road as well? Sure. That was a show Jonathan Lim directed, um, and it was with a Taiwanese star. Um, I forget her name, actually. <laughs> uh, there's been a lot of actresses and actors in my life, but... Uh, uh, Anyway, she was a star from Taiwan, and she came in. And, and you know, we used a, a local actor as well, Henry Ian Kuzak, who I totally appreciate, and is such a strong actor. He was, he's also in Wind and the Reckoning, uh, that movie, the local uh, movie. It's on uh, Hawaiian Air right now. But, um, yeah, it was a, it's, a, it's a woman going through sort of a midlife crisis and loses her, herself and then refocuses. And, yeah, it's an interesting movie to see. Not not a lot to do about Polly Road, but that's what they called it. Yeah. You got at at Sunset on the Beach for Magnum PI, you and your colleagues were honored by the city of Honolulu, the state of Hawaii. Governor Josh Green was there. 
Um, how special was that to really get that kind of recognition from the city and state? Super, super cool. I always have, you know, wanted to give back to Hawaii. When I first started working here over 15 years ago, I just always wanted to leave a mark and do good things for the people of Hawaii because I just appreciated the cruise so much and I wanted to see it go bigger. But to be recognized like that is super cool. It was uh, also with the film, the state film, uh, and the county of Honolulu uh, film, the film uh, commissioners. Um, also, Georgia Skinner from Creative Industry. She was sick that night, wasn't there. But it's an honor to have Governor uh, give me an award, and Jackie Conant from uh, Ed, Gate, uh, Ed Kate's office. And yeah, super cool. John uh, Mazzini is the other one that gave me an award. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, well deserved. I mean, and and I love going to those sunset on the beach events. I mean, it's so great for the fans and the public, the community to really get to see the stars, you know, up close and in person. And and Kenny, I want to ask you about my book. What what are what are two concepts that stood out to you in it? It's just it's the leadership part that you talk about so much and how I've always said, you know, filmmaking or anything that you do is a collaborative effort, right? That, I always say it takes a village. I say that a lot. And it's true. People will say, you know, congratulate me on my show. But I'm like, it's our show. It's not my show. We all work together in unison to make it work. And uh, that, was, uh, that was one of them. The other one that, of course, I like because it was Bethany Hamilton was about courage. And, uh, and courage being able to ignore fear. And I just, I, I'm not, I'm butchering the uh, quote, actually, uh, Coach Rusty, but it, it was, it, I, I thought that was kind of a strong, uh, a strong statement. And uh, it, it is all about uh, not just one person, it's about a whole village. And that's yeah, I, uh, what I think makes good leadership. Yeah. And I, I love that you brought up Bethany Hamilton, and I, I love that you worked with her. And I have to bring that up under that courage and conviction chapter because. I mean, she's so inspirational. And earlier you were saying about how as a producer, your line producer, you're having to be kind of like a general contractor. You're the leader. What what do you feel is your leadership style when you're on doing a production? Well, first of all, I never see red. I never overreact. And I think you say you say this in your book as well. It was interesting because I kind of feel the same way about what you said what you said in your book. But I always listen, react, process, and then react. So I don't just be read and fly off the handle. And calmness, I think, is a big part. When you're in a in a movie with all these moving parts for this TV show with all these moving parts, you can't just, just react right away. You need to listen and process. That makes the difference. No, I'm I'm glad you said that because I, I always say listen first, speak last. And you, I mean, that's that's what you do. And not to react emotionally like you're talking about, because decisions must be based on reason, not emotion, right? Yes, exactly. It never when you get into the drama, and we have drama, right? There's there's so many uh cast of characters on a on a TV show. Uh so we of course some we have dramas that come up. But you just kind of sit back and deal with the, do not put your emotion in it. Yeah, exactly right. Now, you're also like, that. that's a team that you're leading. You have a team and you got to have teamwork. So how do you, how do you navigate through that whole situation, building your team that, you know, it's, it's a new team every time, right? Well, I try not to. Um, we you know, I, I try to work with the same people because we are a family and I try to keep the same people together. It's just like, it, it's a sports metaphor. And again, in your book, you do talk about these sort of things, um, but about like on everybody on the same line of scrimmage, everybody knowing what the play is and all that comes from preparation. So the biggest thing in any of this is to know what we're each going to do. If anybody goes awry, and goes on their own and not being part of the team, people get hurt in our industry. 
We're doing, I have Ferraris rushing down Chinatown with a drone and, and people almost getting hit because we we're, we're doing a stun or like, there's a lot of coordination to all this stuff. And uh, as soon as one person doesn't stay to the plan, people get hurt. No, that's so important. Like you're saying, I mean, you got Ferraris speeding down, you got the drones. I mean, who knows what could happen? And so all that preparation is so critical. And and Kenny, I want to ask you about Brotherhood Grinds. Um, you've been to a number of events at Giovanni Pastrami uh, with Ryan Tanaka, and you've seen the interactions with the sports uh, teams, the UH athletes, and how Ryan is really trying to create a network for them to um, really have our, the community leaders there to talk with, to kind of get to know. What are your thoughts about that? Oh, what a what a great thing to do. Um, I know you're a part of it as well, Coach Rusty and Ryan uh, uh, Tanaka, such a such an angel. And I think the other gentleman, Big City Diner, as well, right? Just taking care of our local athletes and uh, keeping them going strong. It's like these are our pro teams here, and I support UH a lot. I'm all about U of H. Uh, not so much volleyball, though I love to go to games, and but I'm all about basketball because that program needs a lot of, uh, needs more love, basically. Keep it going strong. Yeah, and, and Kenny, yeah, Big City Diner owned by Lane Morocco. I mean, such a great guy, great leader, um, helping sure. the community. And I want to ask you more about UH basketball. And can you share sure. about what you're doing? Because you're you're documenting them, right? We're doing a documentary, Scott Mason and I decided after uh, we were done uh, with Magnum to not just throw our summer away. And so we went to Japan and we've been following them around. We've been interviewing them and welcoming the, the new players like Matthew Cotton and Justin McCoy at the airport and just really, you know, miking coach up a lot, Aaron Gannat and following some players around and Boy, interesting stuff. When and I think it's going to be great, and especially because when I sort of lightly uh, scripted this, of course, because uh, you don't really script a documentary, but I did put in the uh, in the closing of this, you know, the final four. Uh, because why wouldn't I? Yeah. <laughs> so I told him you have to go to the final four because it's in the script. So uh, we'll see you there. Yeah. <laughs> But we're having fun with it. It's super fun. The, the, that team and, and what Iran uh, brings to that team is they're just gentlemen. They're all very, very nice guys. They have good character. And they're all going to go far. Whatever they in, in, end up in, you know, I don't know if it's basketball or law or, I mean, some of them have two M MBAs already, right? Matthew Cotton went to Yale. He's already graduated. He's doing his COVID year, at, you know, for us now. So they're just they're they're just really respectful, great, uh, great character men. Well, Kenny, they're so lucky to have somebody like you, you know, really working to put this documentary together. And was there is there like something that stood out to you, uh, whether it was Coach Iran or any of the players that kind of like really opened your eyes? Yeah, it's just it's fun. You get to you, when you get to know the players, you get to know who the the clowns are. You get to know who the the shy ones are. The you know they're all they're all super nice. But uh, you know Javon is such a leader. He takes he when the with the coaches and around because they can't always be around, right? Uh, according to the NIL, he takes a, a leadership role, and he's the senior. And you know it's just just. It's interesting to watch everybody fall into line. And by the way, he's an amazing player, and it makes sense for him to also be a leader. I completely agree with you. We love Jovan. I mean, I had Jovan on my show, and, you know, his character, I mean, he is he's just a man of great character, and we should all just be so happy that him and his teammates, they're here representing Hawaii in the highest, greatest possible way with excellence. and. And Kenny, I want to ask you about your boat. I know you love being on the water. 
And <laughs> I mean, that's among one of many things that you love to do in Hawaii. What is it about Hawaii that you love so much? I love water, right? Like when I told you I'm going off to do this film in Atlanta and I just will miss water. It's just like it's landlocked, right? I, uh, I don't know. Hawaii, I like to surf. I like to sail. Those are things, you know, I like to, uh, I like to snorkel. I like to, I don't know. It just, I love, I love the water. Maybe it's because I'm an Aquarius. I don't know. <laughs> that definitely has to be a factor if you're an Aquarius. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a dolphin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, Kenny, I want to ask you, just recently, you put together this uh, filmmaking seminar here in Hawaii. Can you share awesome. Care about what you did there? We basically, in 12 hours, shot guns. You know, what did they say to me? They said it was like a, drink, a water fountain fire hose or drinking, you know, <laughs> drinking through a fire hose. We basically took you through pre production, production, distribution, post, uh, went through all the legal ease that you need when you're doing film production. Um, you know, soup to nuts, basically, all the way through. I mean, you're never going to get it in 12 hours. Uh, but we gave a really nice overview in 12 hours. And it was, uh, I think we had 44 people on Saturday. And the, my, my, my biggest compliment to myself was 44 people came back on Sunday. So that was the test for me. Like, oh, they all loved it. And I was asking them, which day was better? They were like, they were both so interesting, right? So we freighted in directors, producers, uh, writers, uh, cast. Stephen Hill came down. Uh, Brian Spicer came and talked about directing. We had a really uh, well-known cinematographer, Eagle. It just went through all the cast of characters, hair, makeup, wardrobe, everything we could teach them about, grip, electric, props. Literally all the pros from Dover showed up and... Uh, and gave a uh, gave what they thought of, of film production and how they dealt with the producer. It was producer centric, so it was about how they deal with the producer. Oh, that's so great to hear! And yeah, like you mentioned, our friend uh, Magnum PI actor Stephen Hill was there speaking, and wow, what a treat for the forty four of them to to see all that. And like you said, for them to come back, I mean, that's a that's a huge compliment to you, Kenny, and. Kenny, I want to get your thoughts about, um, you know, the effects that the film industry has in Hawaii, whether it be a TV series or a movie. I mean, how many people does Hawaii employ when a movie is being filmed? And what are what's the monies that generated to really help the community here? So we we will run on uh, Magnum. We'll run a first unit of probably 120 uh, people. Plus, we'll have, you know, three to 400 extras per uh, per episode. Um, so those are employed. We have all of these teamsters that we employ. I mean, we're spending, you know, $5 million every seven days. That's what we leave here. We pay, uh, you know, of course, we get a rebate, and but that's what makes it work. Uh, is why we can keep production here. Um, but yeah, we have, and then we'll have a second unit as well. And that'll be 40 more people. And, you know, it's, it's, we do a lot for the community and I want to, want to keep that going. So yes, we want to bring another show here. Kenny, what are, what are your ideas to attract more shows and movies to Hawaii then? Well, I, we have uh, the attraction, the, the rebate should is really why a lot of films and, and TV shows come here because there's an incentive to come here. So the the the, the idea of getting the cap extended and or lifted. So you know, I always I I, I say to the uh, legislation body, if it's worth a dollar, it's worth two dollars. So we should keep expanding this program. One of the problems is we're about three deep on crews and we can literally I, I employed 89 percent local last year on magnum pi so we didn't have we don't have to bring a lot of people in they are here we have real top-notch talent in all of the fields here 
and we don't have to bring anybody from anywhere else. Um, what was my point? Uh, <laughs> I'm off. <laughs> I told you I'll ramble on. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyways, uh, I, I do want to get another two crews, three crews going. So I am trying to get a trade school for a, a below the line trade school going. It's going to feed that. The producer part was more of an above the line. Um, which are important roles too. Um, we should have a screenwriting uh, workshop. We should keep teaching, producing, keep teaching, directing, um, and and just keep it going. But I, the first thing I I think the best way to get people employed in union, good paying jobs with pension and health um, is to start the below the line and get people interested in props, get people interested in grip. You know, not a lot of well, you're on an island. What are your options? You, Go to the army. You go to a hotel, or you you know there's 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 several trades available, but this is a really good trade, exciting trade with a really good paycheck and pension and health. So I think we should develop more young men and women into these roles, and then we can have more film production, more television production here. Well, Kenny, I mean we're we're so lucky to have you living in Hawaii. I mean you have so many thoughts and ideas to really take Hawaii, the film industry, to the to the next level. I mean, just the higher levels and be one of the maybe premier destinations in the world because are there, I mean, what other locations are there that might uh, compete with Hawaii? Well, New Zealand, of course. Uh, uh, Puerto Rico, they're kind of, they've lost a uh, incentive. I just actually brought a Hallmark show here last year because they were going to Puerto Rico and they lost the incentive there. So they, they came here instead. Um, Australia is another one I'm sure that competes. Our now, water is prettier than all of those places, by the way. And if anybody would know, it's you because yeah. you're an Aquarius. <laughs> I don't know. That was a maybe. I don't know what that is. Yeah. <laughs> Kenny, I want to ask you about mindset because, you know, in my books, I, I talk a lot about mindset. And when you're running the show, when you're doing that production, and I mean, you have, I mean, unforeseen things will happen. So you have to expect the unexpected and be able to adapt and adjust, right? Yeah, you need a B plan always. Always have that in the back of your mind. If this doesn't go right, where do I, how do I find? <laughs> where do I go to next? Yeah, I always kind of have contingencies built in uh, the back of my mind, just because it is what it is. Things change. All of a sudden, you have weather on top of you, and yeah, you got to always have a way to. Well, let's just go inside. We'll shoot that scene, and then when thirty minutes later it's not raining, we'll go back outside. Or yeah. No, oh, that's so interesting to hear that too. And Kenny, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up of of the in the in the acting world, okay, an actor that you have not worked with, who would be an actor that you would love to work with? I'll go with my favorite actor, which is Christoph Waltz. I, I would that? love to work with him. He's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> That's exactly who I would say, because he's definitely my favorite actor. Just to watch his work is amazing. All right. I'm, I'm going to have to put it out there to him. <laughs> <laughs> Make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> nice. well, Kenny, Kenny, I want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. I mean, you, I mean, you've done so much to help Hawaii and in the film industry. And I just want people to really get to know you and appreciate you and really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. I keep up your good work, Coach Rusty. You do, uh, you have wonderful uh, books and uh, keep this going. I like the, your positiveness and uh, sharing. Awesome. Thanks, Kenny. All and right. Thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes and Noble. I hope that Kenny and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha.